In this video, I'm going to show you some strategies to get more traffic to your books published on Amazon KDP to help increase your sales. And best of all, they are totally free. Welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline. And if you are new around here, please take a moment to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And you will get access to new videos that I upload every single week, all about making money online. I think one of the biggest struggles that people have, and one of the most common questions that I get about publishing books on Amazon is how to make more sales or how to make any sales at all for some people. I talk a lot about the fact that you do have to help generate sales for your books, especially at the beginning when you're publishing a new book and not just leaving it up to Amazon and hope that they send customers to your book to buy it. It's not often that a book will just take off immediately on its own without any outside help and just start making sales right away without you having to put any effort in. So that's where you have to take the initiative and promote your books yourself. But this is where people get stuck. They don't know what to do or they get overwhelmed with the amount of places that they can try to promote the, their book. They have no idea where to start with that or they are overwhelmed with the amount of work or time that it might take to all start to pay off. So first of all, the reality is, is if you don't want to or you can't afford to pay for paid advertising, then you are going to instead use your time and effort to promote your books. When you use paid advertising, the results can be immediate and big. But if you only want to use free ways to promote your books, then it's going to take a bit longer and you are going to have to put in more work because of the fact that they are free methods. Before I do get started with some free traffic strategies for your KDP published books, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 different countries. It's a place for people like me who just love to learn and getting inspired to be creative. I love that Skillshare has such a massive range of classes across all different topics. I'm a huge advocate for self-education and always improving your skills or learning new skills. And I truly believe self-improvement is a lifelong journey. We should never stop learning new things. I have been putting social media marketing as a priority for promoting my books recently. And so to make sure that I am producing the best content that I can for my social media platforms, the latest class that I enjoyed taking was Social Media Success run by Lily Singh. This class helped me understand that storytelling through video, no matter what the video is about, is what creates really successful video content. Because Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, it is ad free, which is great for productivity with less distractions. And and new premium classes are always being added. Skillshare has a great offer for the first 1,000 people to use the link down in my description box below or use my code MYFREEDOMEMPIRE and you'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare. This trial gives you access to the complete library of classes so you can learn something right now today. So with that being said, let's get into some free traffic strategies that you can use to make more sales with your self-published books. And the methods that I'm going to go over here in this video are going to work no matter what type of books that you create and publish and whether they are high content books or low content books, this will work for everyone. So the first free traffic strategy is social media. That may not come as a surprise. I talk about social media marketing in quite a few of my videos related to publishing books on Amazon KDP. So this encompasses the main and the big three in my opinion, which are Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I do recommend picking just one social media platform and focusing on that because the worst thing that we do when it comes to social media marketing is we try to be everywhere and we spread ourselves too thin. And what happens is we get so overwhelmed with all the different platforms and all the different requirements and the idea of having to create unique content for them all. We start to think, when will we even have any time to make and publish any books? So pick the one that you like the most and make that one your main focus. But then why I like these specific three together is that you can repurpose and reuse your content across all of those social media platforms pretty easily and quickly. For example, let's say you focus on creating videos for TikTok. Once you have uploaded a video to TikTok, take that video, download it from TikTok and upload it to Instagram Reels. And 
your Facebook stories feature. The same content, it just takes maybe a few extra minutes to upload to those extra couple of platforms without having the need to create a whole batch of new unique content for each one. Pretty much every social media platform these days is focused on video content. That is their priority, pushing video content to their audiences. So you are going to have to create videos. If you are worried about putting your face on camera or anything like that, you don't want to talk, put your voice on camera, don't worry, you don't have to if you don't want. Let's have a look at some examples. So I'm just over here on TikTok and I decided to use journals as an example in this one, guided journals. And I've just had a look to see what kind of TikTok accounts and videos I can find related to journals where you could use those same types of videos to promote your low content books if you were doing something like guided journals. Whatever type of low content or any other type of book that you're doing, these can all still be applied. So I came across this account over here here. And although this account overall isn't fully specifically targeted to journals. This person does do a lot of journal related content. So you can see here she's got quite a lot of followers, has had millions of likes across her videos. Her channel or her account, TikTok account is about ASMR, journaling, reading, studying and vlogs. So there was one particular video that I saw that I thought would be a really great example for this. And she has some videos like this. So all I've turned off is the volume which had some music overlaid, but she's basically just done a video about journaling before bedtime, the journal that she's using and just her process of journaling. So if you do have something like a guided journal, you could easily do something very similar to that. As you can see, her face and her voice is not in the videos. So she does do quite a few videos like that about her journaling process. She's got a journal prompt there, which is something else that you could offer. So that's just some really great examples of how you can create content on social media for your books without showing your face and just purely showing off the product and how to use the product. Now the other thing I did do a search for is journal prompts because like I say journal prompts would be a great way for people to use their journal so you could provide journal prompts in your videos. You can see here these journal prompt videos have massive amounts of views. This particular one here is basically just a background with a journal prompt on it and so you could do videos like this. Very simple, very easy videos. It probably has some music over it though the sound isn't working on it and then you could also sprinkle in videos about your actual journals as well so they can go buy your journal and then use the journal prompts that you provide in these videos and it's as simple as that I mean obviously it takes a bit of work it might not be easy at first learning how to create these videos and learning how to use the platforms and things like that but once you get the hang of it it will become something that's pretty easy for you to do and it's just another great way that you can promote your books without having to pay any money now if you are someone who does high content books whether you're a fiction or a non-fiction writer then there is something on TikTok called BookTok and books are going crazy on TikTok. So if you do high content books, this is a really great place to promote your books. And a lot of the authors that use TikTok never show their face, never use their voice. They just show the book. They do flips through the books. They just put a quote up about the book and then flip the book and show the cover of what book it is they're talking about. So there are lots of creative ways that you can create videos that is purely based on the product and not on you if you are not comfortable putting yourself out there on camera. Now, another Another example that I did want to show you is this account. Now this account isn't pure, purely about journaling or anything like that. You can see it looks like it's just a personal lifestyle type of TikTok account but I just wanted to show you this one particular video that took off for this person. So you can see she doesn't have a lot of followers, 2,850 but her video that she posted about a journal took off and got 8.8 .8 million views. So I just wanted to show you that you don't if you're someone who's sort of like, you don't have followers, you think you need a lot of followers, it's going to take too much time to build up followers. This is what I mean with TikTok, where you can still see massive results from your account. So your account can grow very quick, but also your videos can just go viral. And if this was your book that you were selling and you one of your videos took off and you got 8.8 .8 million views, that just gives so much exposure to your book. And she just did a video about a wellness journal and that's it. And it's just her showing the book. So simple. Another example I just want to show you now, this is a fiction author, but the reason I wanted to show you this one is because this is a great example of repurposing the content. So when I say create a video, put it on TikTok, then just use that same video, download it, 
it, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook. It's so you're not creating all this extra content. You're using the same content and just spending a few extra minutes putting it up on other platforms. So Katie Wisma, what she does is she creates her TikTok videos. They all go up on TikTok. She doesn't have a huge following. We can see here she's got all her videos on TikTok. And then when we go over to her Instagram, she posts the exact same videos on Instagram. So if we head back to TikTok, you can see the amount of views she's got on her videos. They're generally just over a thousand, around the two, three thousand mark every now and then there's one that takes off a bit more. But if you have a look over on her Instagram, her videos get way more views for the most part, not every single one of them, but you can see that the figures on the views here are a lot higher than through TikTok. So you never know how, how the content is going to go on each platform and which platform is going to perform best. Now, in terms of sales, whether the sales come from TikTok, even though the views are less or whether the sales come from Instagram, that's something that you're not really ever going to know. But she creates the video for TikTok, which now probably only takes her a few minutes to make each video. But then she just reposts the exact same videos on Instagram and she's getting more views on Instagram, which has to result in some sort of sales for just a few minutes extra work. So that's just an example of what I was talking about of basically just reposting content across multiple platforms. So you don't have to put in a lot of extra effort. She's not making more or different content for the different platforms. She's just repurposing one video that she makes for TikTok. Now, also the reason that I do suggest starting with uploading videos to TikTok is because it is a platform that is still currently growing. It's quite new compared to the others and you can see really quick growth on this platform at the moment in both your followers, your audience, and the views that you can get on your videos. Instagram and Facebook just seem to be so hard at the moment to get any traction on your content. These days they're inconsistent with the algorithm between what content it does push out to your audience and what it doesn't. It doesn't seem to make sense sometimes and it's really getting harder and harder for your followers to see your content without you having to pay for ads in some way or pay to boost posts to get more people to see it. TikTok doesn't have these problems right now so you can grow your account very quickly and you can get some really great results from it. Like I said earlier, take your content from TikTok and upload it to Instagram and Facebook as your secondary social media platforms. At the end of the day, you never know which one is actually going to take off and be your best performer, but that way you have all your bases covered. YouTube is the next free traffic strategy that you can use because YouTube is totally free to join and also totally free to upload content to. The key to YouTube is uploading consistently and that's how you grow your audience there. So obviously you you do have to be creating videos since YouTube is a video based social media platform and just upload videos consistently and your audience will find you. Like I say, this one is a little harder to do. It does have to be videos and it's a little harder to do videos without showing your face. But if you do videos showing your face in them, once you start, it does get easier as time goes on. There are several things that you can do on YouTube depending on what type of books that you create. If you are a fiction author, for example, you could create a YouTube channel where you post videos about your daily work life or even your personal life if you feel comfortable doing that. There are lots of videos on YouTube about a day or a week in the life of a writer or an author. And it's a place that your readers can come and find you and see behind the scenes of the person who writes their favorite book or who has created their favorite characters and it's a way to connect with readers on a different level. If you write non-fiction books or you create low content books like coloring books or journals or activity books and things like that, create a channel around the niche that your books are in. These types of channels are definitely easier to do without showing your face because the videos aren't really going to be about you. So you can just create really interesting content related to whatever the books are about. For low content books, for example, let's say that you create guided journals. You could build a YouTube channel around journaling, how journaling improves your life, how to journal, how to set up your journal, what your journaling routine is and things like that. Or if you create coloring books, make videos of you coloring in. You could create a sort of relaxing type of video where we just watch you color in with some nice relaxing music in the background, or you could even make it uh, ASMR type of video as well. Let's see what channels that we can find on YouTube that are like this to see some examples. Now I'm just over in YouTube and I'm going to continue using the guided journal and journaling example, the same as what I used over on TikTok and Instagram. And I've just typed journaling into YouTube to see the kind of videos that would come up for 
journals. We'll just have a look at what types of videos are popular. We've got journaling techniques that changed my life with over 600,000 views, how to start journaling. I replace social media with micro journaling and this videos about journaling tips. People are very interested in journaling. So creating videos for YouTube around journaling and some of these topics that you could make videos about, then what you could do is just pop links to your journals in your description or even feature your journals in the video. Use your journals in the videos, show yourself using them and say, if you like this journal, you can go buy it at the link in the description box below. So for example, just gonna open up this video. I'm not sure if this person even has a journal to sell, but if we look down here in her description, so she's been journaling since 2019 and she doesn't have a journal to sell, but she's got lettering guides. So she has lettering, cursive and handwriting printable workbooks. I talked about these books in my last video, the top selling low content books on Amazon KDP. She's not selling them on Amazon KDP, she's selling them on Etsy. As a little side note, if you are creating handwriting workbooks, on Amazon KDP, take those pages and sell them digitally on Etsy as a printable as a little extra income. It's not any extra work. You're not recreating a whole new product. You're just taking something you've already made and selling it in a different format on a different platform. It's working smarter, not harder. Now, the only thing she does have though, she's not selling a journal. She is telling you where she gets her journals from and she's linked affiliate links in her description to all the products on Amazon. So she'll be getting some affiliate a commission for them but if she created her own journal that she was selling on Amazon KDP I've done another example for this one for YouTube and that's coloring books I've typed in coloring books in the YouTube search bar and we have coloring book videos so this one's about is this the most intricate adult coloring book ever this person obviously collects coloring books and the videos are going through her completed and finished pages this person uses 320 markers on a single page and it's got 3.3 million views so with these types of of low content books if that's what you're selling you just have to be really creative and think of some really interesting ideas to create videos about that will get people watching that will get people interested and just feature your books within the videos then pop links down in the description box below the video so that people can go buy the books that are featured in your videos coloring books I feel like would be a lot easier to do videos about without having to show your face and so the idea here is what you do is once you have created a video talk about the books within the video and then also pop links to your books down in the description box so that your viewers can uh, go to Amazon and buy them. The other thing about YouTube is that it is starting to build up a community element or a social media platform element in the sense of having interaction between the channel or the channel's owner and the audience where you can upload posts and stories just like Instagram and Facebook. So just going back to those videos that we were talking about that you create for TikTok and then upload to Instagram and Facebook as well. If you then also have a YouTube channel, you also have that content that you can upload to your YouTube stories as well. Pinterest is the next free traffic strategy that you can use. And I didn't include this under social media platforms because Pinterest isn't technically a social media platform. A social media platform would generally center around interaction between you and your followers. And this just doesn't happen with Pinterest. Pinterest is more of a search engine like Google, but with its search results based around images. And this is why people go to Pinterest because they're searching for something. They're not looking to interact with other people, other followers, audiences, or even account owners or anything like that. They're purely there to search for something. And Pinterest is also starting to incorporate video into its platform, just like everyone else. So if you do create videos for TikTok, and Instagram Reels, Facebook Stories, YouTube Stories. You can even repurpose those videos and upload them to Pinterest as well. So that is five social media platforms that you can post just one piece of content to. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest. With Pinterest, you create pins that you upload to Pinterest and you link those pins to your books on Amazon. Creative types of books seem to do particularly well with Pinterest, like coloring books or pretty journals or planners and things like that. But also that doesn't mean that other types of books are not going to work being promoted there. The thing with Pinterest is that its audience is primarily female and mums. So the types of books that those kind of customers are going to buy 
is what's going to do really well being promoted on Pinterest. Let's head over to Pinterest and have a look for some examples. Okay, I'm just in Pinterest and I have done a search for coloring book using coloring book as an example here just to see what kind of pins are coming up for coloring books. Now on this one, it looks like there's a lot of coloring book pages. So what you could use Pinterest for is you could take a few of your coloring book pages and maybe use them as a giveaway or like a free lead magnet as they call them where you could give away some pages for free on your website by them signing up to your email list or something like that. So in order to get some free coloring pages from you they have to join your email list and from there you can market to those people with your actual full books that they can go buy on Amazon. I've also done a quick search for Journal. I typed in pretty journal to see what would come up and there's lots of examples of people's journal pages and how they've completed their journals, how they've filled them out. You could also do something similar to the TikTok videos where you provide journal prompts and you could even do that as a free giveaway. So maybe put together a set of journal prompts for free for people who join your email list. So then you can market to those potential customers through email marketing and potentially have them buy your books that way. But these pins, most of them are very simple. They're just a simple image of the book or the page or the product. You could do something like this where you create a more creative pin saying, look, we've got a freebie. This particular one's to do with printable ephemera pages, which is something for scrapbooking type of things. But you could do something similar with free coloring book or free printable coloring pages or something like that, whatever it is that you want to give away in order to get someone to sign up to your email list. This one's just a list of journal prompts and look at that. What they they've done is they've taken their video from TikTok, they haven't even removed the watermark and they've just straight up uploaded their TikTok video to Pinterest. So just repurposing their content, which is what this whole video has been about, not having to create all these multiple different pieces of unique content is just creating one piece of content for one social media platform that you're focusing on or YouTube or Pinterest and then taking a few extra minutes posting that exact same content across other social media platforms. So it's a way to not get overwhelmed with being in a lot of different places at the same time. So while you are focusing on one social media platform you are sort of hitting quite a few others but just with the same content it's not taking a lot of extra work and it's not taking a lot of extra time. The next free traffic strategy that you can use is creating a blog centered around your books or around the niche that your books are in. This is effectively the same as what you would do with creating social media content, but in written format. So if you are one of those people who really don't feel comfortable creating videos, putting yourself on camera or putting your voice over on camera and feel that you communicate better through words, then this could be a great option for you. You can create a free blog with WordPress or many other free blogging platforms that are out there. You could even write articles and post them on Medium if you don't want to create your own blog, though I would really recommend having your own blog even if you still are intending to post your articles to Medium. The great thing about Medium as well is it does have a program where you can earn money from your articles. So that's always something to keep in mind as well. Put links to your books within the posts that you create for your blog or, or put up on Medium so that people can easily find your books if they want to buy them. Here is an example of a low content book which is crazy popular on Amazon KDP. I have featured it in quite a few of my videos that I do about niches and that is Crystal Radke's letter tracing book. Let's go take a look at her website and blog to get an idea of the types of things that you could be blogging about or the type of content that you can create centered around a low content book. Okay, so I'm just over here on Crystal Radke's website. It is called creativeinlife.com and this website, as you can see, very bright, very colorful, very teacher looking, very kindergarten looking. So it's cre creative and kinder with Crystal Radke and it's all of her blog posts, her shop, all of the different things that she does in relation to creating educational products, educational digital products as well for or kindergarten aged children. If you are a fiction or non-fiction author who creates high content books, obviously if you have a non-fiction book then you have a niche or a topic that you can create blog posts about. But if you do write fiction books, can you create a blog? Is it going to work? Some people have made a blog work. Take a look at this author who has an insanely popular blog where they kind of just talk about their books as well as some blog posts about their personal life. So they get their readers involved in their life and their book writing and making. And their books are incredibly popular on Amazon. And the blog is definitely helping 
pushing that traffic to Amazon. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list of free traffic strategies that you can use to promote your books and make more sales. I can't get through every single one in this video because it would just get too long, but I hope that you have found those that I have talked about in this video helpful. I know that for most of us, we just want to make books and we don't really find the marketing side of the business all that fun, but it is something that you have to do if you want to build up your publishing business to make a consistent and substantial income. Even fiction book authors who write novels and they are traditionally published, so their books are published through a publishing house, they have to do their own marketing. Unless, of course, you're Stephen King, but <laughs> for the majority of authors, who are published traditionally, they still have to do their own marketing and promotion. But what I'm trying to say here is that it's just part of the publishing business, no matter what type of books you make. You are going to have to do it if you want a legitimate business and not just a hobby. If you'd like me to make separate videos going more into depth on each platform and traffic strategy, I'd be happy to do that. Let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.